guys and girls too of course a little quick tip here I was just looking at the Sagmeister and Walsh website and although that's not the quick tip they do have some cool stuff so check it out and I came across this logo for GUT um, agency in Miami and it looks really 3D-ish despite not really being 3D because there's no shadows or reflections or any good stuff like that and still you know like I think it's really really cool looking and it really has this unique feel to it and the good thing for you is that actually this is really easy to pull off. So why don't we go over to um, Cinema 4D and give it a go. So first off I need that squiggly line and it's pretty important to have something that goes over and under a little bit uh, because that's actually selling that 3D effect. So here we go. This is my... what is this? L, I think this is an L. Um, and up next, what we need to do is we have to offset these points because now they're all lining up. And you know, if they're all lining up, then they're just going to uh, be in each other's way, and that's not what we want. So uh, let's off center these a little bit. Uh, doesn't really matter how you do it, I'm basically, just pulling. And you know, I don't even know what I'm doing, but. Um, I'm just going to make sure that it's just not in the same uh, line right here. That's basically it. And I'm just going to look at the other port later on, the perspective port right now actually, to see what I just did. And yeah, it's kind of going over and under a little bit. Um, definitely got some problems and some issues here. But other than that, I don't think they're touching each other too much, which is pretty good. So here we have our squiggly line, um, oh sorry, L, we have an L, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just that, right, it's a line, it's nothing else, so we need uh, something to move along this spline, so here we have a capsule, I'm going to scale it down just a little bit, and since it's just a capsule and a spline, I need something to uh, wrap this capsule around, so I'm going to get the spline wrap, drop it, uh, underneath the capsule, make it a child with a capsule and drop our spline in the spline section right here. And now we have something that looks pretty amazing, don't you think? Uh, no, it does not. And that's because the capsule doesn't have too many segments. So I'm going to up the segments a little bit here. Let's, you know, throw some big numbers in there and see what's happening. It looks better already. Yes, it does. Um, you just gotta play with these numbers a little bit, you know, see what works for you. I'm not going to be worried about it too much as long as things are looking like this crazy on our corner right here. Um, up next, I'm going to create a material, and since you know our uh, reference didn't have any shadows or any uh, reflection or any good stuff like that, I'm just going to use the luminance channel. And in this luminance channel, I'm going to choose a gradient. And I'm just I'm going to make sure that the white section, which is the ring part, is going to be pretty small because I thought you know when I looked at the reference, the rings were really small as well. I'm going to set this to V because I want it to be um, lining up nicely on our little model right here. So I'm going to drop this on our capsule, and as you can see, it's still off. That's because over here the axis is off, you know, you have to make it a Y axis, doesn't really matter if you do it plus or minus. And here you go, it's all black except for this white little tip right here, exactly like our material. Um, and we need to address this, right? I mean, this doesn't look anything like what we've seen before. So what we do, uh, the length is 100% means it's stretching it all the way across our uh, model right here, and you don't want that, you know, we would just want, we want it to repeat. So if we put the length at say, 2%, then we have our little snake right here. And let's up the tiles to uh, maybe a little more, let's say okay, 140 or something. That looks better, right? Okay, guys, so here we have it, our little model. And if we do a quick render, let's render it to a picture viewer. Um, it looks pretty cool, but you know, it's not really animating yet. And that's because we didn't tell it to animate. So what we do, what we do is like we put it all the way to zero in our timeline right here. We go to the offset and make a keyframe, and we do the same thing at the end. So let's make it 90 frames. Let's see it all the way. 
So at 90 frames, let's say, you know, it's offset by what, 7, 7%? Seven Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. All right, let's have a look. And it's starting to animate. It's picking up speed. And you'll see that it starts slowing down again. That's not what we want. You know, it looks pretty cool, but that's not what we want. That's because the keyframes are set to spline and we want it linear. We want just one linear movement. And um, that was like a right mouse click, by the way, guys, on the keyframes, in case you're wondering. And now it's just moving continuously, just all smooth, all nice. And uh, let's set this to 89. Let's see if this works. Uh, it, should, it should kind of loop now. And it does. It actually does loop. So let's render this to our uh, previewer. And there we go, guys. We have our own L-ish shape that's uh, animating on and looking really cool. And this should be looping as well. So I hope you guys learned something. This was a really quick one. Um, if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below or show me what you've done. If you made some really cool, interesting things, you know, you can do this with lots of materials and patterns. It's not just uh, this gradient, you know, so uh, show me what you've done and uh, I'll be back for the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.